Hey guys, got a little pickup video here, highly requested, but let's get right into it. Went to an antique shop this past weekend and there was all sorts of cool stuff. And by the way, if you're into that sort of cool stuff, I'm gonna save it for the last half of the video. The first half is just gonna be strictly video games. But if uh, you wanna see some of the stuff I've picked up at these uh, retro places, stick around. We'll be talking about some of that. But anyways, Cyber Sled for the PS1. It's like a 3D arena style uh, mech game. It's been on my list for a while now. I'm glad I have it. It's pretty awesome. Played it for about, I'd say like tw 20 minutes or so. The controls are pretty intuitive. L2, R2 to shift your mech and aim. It's cool. This is the Lombox version of it. And uh, it's kind of falling apart, but uh, I gave it a good cleaning and the disc works perfectly. So I'm glad I finally have that one off my wish list. I've been looking for it for a while. Uh, I try to range these games in not too much of a particular order. Uh, you're going to see that the latter half of the video game section has all the Switch games. Danny, I'm going to try and remember to, uh, which ones I recommend. Uh, it's going to be hard to do that because some of these aren't too obtainable physically. But anyways, let's start with Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. This one includes all the DLC, and I had to do it for my boy Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, ever since he was put into this game, that's when it really piqued my interest, because before, it was, I was just like, eh, another Mortal Kombat game, but I actually heard that this one's pretty sick, so uh, I wanted to check it out, and now I have it on PS5. Hopefully all the DLC is, like, baked into the actual disc. If not, it'll probably come with some sort of code that I'm going to have to redeem and open the cellophane on the game. Um, let's see, this is my second take recording this video, so all my little setup that I had previous is now in reverse order as I stacked the games away. But here we go. Thank you for bearing with me. I have Zack and Wiki to make up for the delay. Quest for Barbro's Treasure on Wii. Uh, I've been looking for this one for a while. It's been on my wish list. I know it's like a point-and-click adventure. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about it. Just uh, it's all the games that I'm going to show you today are complete for the most part. This one has its manual and it's in really great shape. I bought it at the Game MD. Shout out to Roy. He's going to have a lot of contributions to this video. Uh, I went to a Value Village, which is a Canadian uh, Goodwill, basically. And I expanded my SNES collection a little bit with Al Unser Jr.'s Road to the Top. It's one of those retro racers where you're just kind of driving in a straight line and the road in front of you curves and bobs and weaves. Uh, it has go-karts, F1 racers, uh, snowmobiles, that sort of stuff. I actually played it for about 15-20 eh, minutes and it was good. Ten bucks, sign me up. That shit was pretty, pretty nice. I enjoyed it. Sincerely, I did. This one's a heavy hitter. This one's a heavy hitter. Recommended to me by Diego. God Hand. I finally have it. Got it for a pretty decent price. Um, and I've played it for about an hour. Just a, a rough hour or so. And the game is sick. It's really, really sick. Uh, maybe the camera controls as you walk, you know, the camera shifts behind you. Gets a little getting used to, but the combat is super satisfying. It's hilarious. And the graphics hold up to this day, even though I don't have my CRT TV up here with me. Um, it still looks fun. I mean, it it is fun. It looks great. And I'm going to add it to the rotation of games that I'm going to beat. Diego has beaten this game eight times. So that's pretty insane. That's some dedication. -ish. Oh, you see, that's that's a good sign. It's currently in my PS2. I'm probably gonna play a little bit tonight, to be honest with ya. Um, all right, and just like that, we're in our Nintendo Switch games. 
As I mentioned previously in my last video, Star Wars Episode I Racer was kind of the game that spurred me into my racing video game buying spree. So I had this one, that's the one that started it all, but I had it digitally, it was like 10 bucks. So when I walked into the game MD and I saw this there, limited run, it has a little manual and everything. I jumped on it. It's cool, great sense of speed, and uh, it's a sick game. So I got that. Uh, next, we got a Metal Jesus recommendation. Val Ferris. Seems to be like one of those 32-bit retro style, ultra gory 2D style games. Very metal cover there. Haven't played this one yet, but it looks sick. It looks very gory and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I bought this one at the same store that I got God Hand in. This was my only planned purchase and God Hand came out of nowhere. I was just like, yeah, fuck me up with that. Uh, Danny, no particular recommendations so far, but here's another weird one. Turk and Flashback 30th Anniversary. Let's see if we can zoom in on the back here. We got four separate games. Super Turrican, Mega Turrican, Turrican, and Turrican 2. I have always heard the name Turrican when it came to retro video games, but I never really knew what sort of genre it was, and I played a couple of the games on this collection. Basically just a 2D run and gun. I believe part one uh, is randomly generated levels and Part 2, didn't, I didn't notice it, but yeah, I mean, it's cool to add to the collection. I don't think I'm ever going to see this store, this game in stores, so I peeped Amazon and I saw that they had it. I was like, yeah, sign me up. All on one cart, which is nice. No manual on the inside, but that is complete. One game that does have a manual and that I've been waiting for a physical release. I knew it was going to happen, so I'm glad I held off. Uh, Hades. Everyone's heard about this game. You know, Diablo, isometric, camera angle, randomly generated dungeons. Uh, it's a roguelite. Roguelite, because your progression saves over. Um, and yeah, it's cool. I've played it for maybe an hour, hour and a half, and I feel like I need to unlock more weapons to unlock the game's full potential. Uh, I'm sure the hype is there. I just need to play it for longer. Don't take me, you know, wrong here. It's it's a really solid game. It's really cool. I can see myself playing this for extended periods of time and, you know, just going back to it even. So I'm glad I have this guy. Came with a little manual and soundtrack. So that's some good fan service there. Uh, this is another weird one. Danny, by the way, I'm glad that you're going to get Hades, try and get it physically. I heard they're going to be maybe a little rare, so you might want to jump on that. <laughs> we got Fight Crab, everyone. That's right. My first official Japanese game, as you can tell by the zero rating there. Uh, this was... Maybe another Metal Jesus recommendation or Radical Reggie, to be honest. They give some pretty solid recommendations sometimes. This game just reminded me of those, like, really wacky, stupid four-player video games that I would play with my friends. It's very physics-based, floppy, ragdoll, crustaceans wielding bunch of different weapons and there's a bunch of different species of, of crab here. <laughs> I don't know how much longer I can talk about it, but I could just tell you kind of like the experience that you'll get playing this game. And uh, I'm going to keep it sealed for now. And it looks cool. It's I'm pretty glad it's my first Japanese release. Got it from Play Asia. They have some solid stuff on there. Uh, 
Yeah, haven't played that yet, but I'm looking forward to it. As much as anyone can look forward to playing with crabs. All right. We got a limited run Grandia HD collection. I'm um, so glad I found this in Roy's store because the prices on it on Amazon were like $180. I found it there for a fraction of the price. It's still sealed, so it has all the cool stuff in there. It has part one and two. I'm very intrigued by the art style more so than anything else. Uh, part one has like this cool isometric sprite view um, and the combat system I heard was ahead of its time it uses like this real-time turn-based uh, I forgot what it's called like action time um, system in the battles and part two again the graphics they're 3d that time and they look cool they look really cool from all the videos that I've seen. So I'm really, really happy to actually have this in my collection. At some point, I'll find time for it. Maybe after I beat like Final Fantasy VIII, which is another huge RPG. We'll see, but I'm glad I have it. Uh, let's see here. Just, those weren't video games, so no fret. Just Molly's Arts and Crafts. Another Play Asia release. Gigantic Army. Oh man, this game is actually super sick. It's one of those 16 bit mech shooter platform games. Really tough. There's only like six levels. I've gotten up to part uh, level three using up like all my continues. Then it just tosses you back out to the main menu. But. Play Asia did a really nice job at putting this digital game uh, physically. Like I think they limited to 1,500 games as per the sticker there. So some nice little fanfare. They're trying to jump on the limited run craze, I guess. But hey, I don't mind it. I've been keeping my eye on this game ever since it came out digitally, and I was holding out on some sort of physical. So check out Play Asia. They have some some cool stuff and like they even threw in like a, a little keychain that's just like a replica of the actual game. You can put your actual cartridge in there, you know, if you're into that sort of shit. Alright, we're almost done with our video games here. Uh, this game looks so neat. Recommended to me personally by Roy as I stopped by his store to feed my addiction of video games. He's like, hey, look what I got here. This game has some cool fan service to it. It comes in this retro sleeve protector type deal. The artwork is super sick, and it's like this ultra-violent retro bit style hockey game, and there's blood all over the ice, and you beat the crap out of people. Really fun local multiplayer. I've actually played it for, I'd say about an hour and had some really good fun with it. It has all sorts of stuff in it. I'm really glad I have that. So glad he recommended that to me. And I'm adding a rare game to my collection. That's always good times as I struggle to put it away. Super Blood Hockey. All right, last but not least, this is the game that I've been coming back to time and time again. It is Lonely Mountains Downhill. It's a super rare release. Came with this cool little slip cover with some uh, actual etched treading on there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. This game, Danny, I don't know if you're going to be able to find it uh, physically, but digitally, I say it's worth every penny. It came with all sorts of cool stuff. Very addictive. Very hard. But 
it's awesome. I don't know, just look it up. I'm sure you've heard of it. You're just going down mountains on a bicycle and it's all very physics based and you're trying to beat your best times, all that sort of stuff. I can't wait to play more of this game. This is gonna be in my rotation for a long time. Um, every time I get these limited run games and stuff, I'm going to try and store all their goodies in this little Rolodex type deal. So, you know, it comes with its cards and that sort of stuff. There's one for blood hockey in here, for super blood hockey. You take a picture with the actual game, you send it to them or something, and they'll give you a, a patch. So, maybe I'll do that. Maybe not. But anyways, that does it for video games. If you want to stick around for the toys and collectibles side of things, be my guest. I appreciate it. Uh, I found this. I don't know if it's all in frame there. Yeah, it's just about. It's a Super Mario Bros. comic. It's, uh, I don't know. It's Canadian, I guess. No, that's just the price in everything. Let me see if I can find the date. 1989. So, I'm not going to flip through the whole thing, but you can see the retro, retro art. That sort of stuff. Cool little coffee book table piece sort of deal. Caught that for really cheap at the antique shop. Uh, I'm just gonna pile on some crap here. Uh, I got a at the same antique shop. I got a multi tap for the PS1 for ten bucks. Sticker's still on there. I need to clean this bad boy. But I had a shitty third party one. Now I can replace it with an actual official PlayStation one. So that's cool. Uh, I have a Samus Figma, but I managed to find some like little Metroids to overwhelm her and eat her. Cool little piece I just have on my shelf. So I found these, which look to be dated 1991. They're like these plastic VHS or Super Nintendo game cases. They're kind of beat up, they're scuffed up. But they had a green one and two orange ones. It's just that that other orange one was all messed up. I couldn't, you know, even pay the $3 they were asking for it. This one has its sticker. This one used to have its sticker. You can kind of see that. Uh, it's neat. I think I feel like I need to clean them some more. These are pretty ancient. But I, maybe I could, you know, put some stuff in there. So that's... Cool little conversation piece. I like the colors. Make some room here. Uh, I got this really old looking Mario. He's extremely retro. You can tell by just like the complexion and hair color. It's not focusing, which is annoying, but I believe it's. 2002 this isn't too old, but uh, good articulation on it. It's neat. Add him to my little Mario shrine. I don't even like Mario that much, but it's just that he's he's so iconic. Uh, <laughs> these guys too. Uh, I had seen these guys in the antique shop that I keep mentioning months ago and I'm so surprised they still have some. I believe there's some sort of uh, what's it called? Table tennis type game from back in the day. These are quite retro. Like the design is just screams I'm I'm fifty thousand years old. This one's on a spring. Little Mario. I think I have some sort of or I guess I'm just building a Mario Kart, uh, I don't know, display. I'm going to buy some Ikea 
display cabinet and some glass ones just to put all my figures and shit in. So I have a couple of Mario's. This is like a Burger King one. This one's a little bit cooler. It has the whole pull action thing. Uh, love me some Yoshi. So I have my, my little Mario Kart toys. What else I got? I have this monstrosity, which I guess also counts as a Mario Kart. Damn, this thing must be super old. Can't find a date on it. I guess it used to light up at some some point. Not really sure what that's all about. But okay. Uh, another little old Lucky 2. I think this one had a base at some point and got snapped off for it. Maybe that's just its uh, butthole. Yeah, he oversees the Mario Carters. Uh, couple. Yeah, let's, let's just speed through this shit, hey? Couple Yoshis from like Burger King or something. Those are cool, you know? Like you, you, you set them up together and it ends up being pretty neat. Oh god, more toys, uh, Mario Maker, you got Luigi, I'm just gonna have like a display somewhere, they're not gonna be laying all over my house, fuck no. Not a huge Pokemon fan, but Sandile is a cool character design. Good articulation, it's a Jack specific, I remember, uh, I used to buy the wrestling toys with Diego. So Jack specific. And we got the limited edition Lita figure. That was awesome for like eating cornflakes or something. Got a little old school Donkey Kong here. This guy was also in that last trip to the antique mall. I don't know how it survived. Maybe it was kind of the ridiculous price tag that they were asking for this, but I've been thinking about this this particular Donkey Kong figure for too many too many nights not to finally buy it. It's pretty cool. Um, Red Shell. I got this, this, uh, this like storage box. Molly pointed it out to me in this antique mall. I think it was meant to store a Nintendo DS, but Right now I just have my loose Switch games since I don't have all my game cases currently and I just have them stored away in there. And just one last thing is... John Henry!